So the next thing I want to cover is how to version data. So I think of data versioning as like multiple levels of, I guess, complexity. Um, level zero is just there is no versioning. That's where everyone starts at. Level one is you version it just by taking a snapshot. Level two is you version it in a more, in a better way that we'll talk about. And level three is you use some kind of specialized data versioning software. So level zero, you just got your data on your file system or maybe in S3, maybe in your database. Um, and you're not versioning on it, you're just kind of, I train on Tuesday, I, I'm using the data that's there on Tuesday. I train on Friday, I'm gonna use the data that's there on Friday. The problem with that is that when you deploy the model that you train, that has got to be versioned. And you know, the, the deployed machine learning model is part code, part data, right? If you're deploying something that's part code, part data, and it needs to be versioned, but the data is not versioned, then you can't really version the deployed model. Um, and the problem that you will face is that at some point you'll want to revert, like you'll deploy a model and it'll mess everything up. You'll want to revert to the previous version and you won't know how because you're not properly versioning the model. Does that make sense? So level one is you version the data just by taking a snapshot of it and then storing it somewhere. So on Tuesday I train, so I download all the data, I package it up, I store it somewhere else. On Friday I train, I download all the data, I store it somewhere else. Um, and so then, yeah, I can actually deploy a model and it'll say, you know, the code is this GitHub commit, git commit. The data is, uh, you know, Friday, March 2nd, um, 2019. And so then if something messes up, I'll be like, oh shoot, I have to go back to February 24th, 2019. And I'm able to do that, but it's super hacky. So it'd be better if we could version data just as easily as we can code. So that's where I think we get to level one, which is data is versioned as a mix of assets and code, which this is what it means for me. So let's say you're doing some kind of image processing or speech recognition. So your actual speech uh, sound files or your images are stored in S3, but they have unique IDs, right? That's how you get them in and out of S3. So your actual training data is gonna be a list of the, these IDs and potentially with metadata like the labels, like what are they labeled with. You can check that JSON or whatever you know, structured data format, you can check that into version control. And then when you check it out, you can go back to any point in time, as long as you never delete anything from S3, you can get back to whatever data you had at that time. So this is what I like. Um, now JSON files can get big because you might have millions of examples and so millions of rows in a text file is still gonna be like several megabytes and probably not something you wanna like be checking into version control just like you do code. But there's a thing called git LFS, which we actually use in the lab, um, which stands for git large file storage. And this lets us store them just as easily as code. Um, now, there's a whole like lab about versioning data tomorrow, so I'll, I'll be talking more about this tomorrow. So yeah, so then if you do this approach, then the, the, the version of the data set is uniquely defined by the git signature of the code base and the raw data file, right? And then you know that the raw data file points to some larger objects that are stored in S3 somewhere. Yeah? Yeah, that depends on, that's an interesting question. So the question is, how future-proof is this kind of scheme? Because, um, you know, deployed systems are changing, right? So maybe we change the database schema, but then this thing is still pointing to the old database schema, or maybe we delete some data uh, down the line. And I think the answer kind of depends on your actual application. So in my application, which is education, we are very strict about privacy. So we act like if someone tells us to delete data, we actually have to delete all the data. Um, and that means I can't keep the data around to train on it in the future. So for my use case, this is actually a feature. Like I want the data gone. I don't ever want to see it again if someone told me to delete it. But for some other applications, you don't have that constraint, right? Or you might have the opposite constraint. You really want to keep everything forever. So I think 
the right place to enforce it is um, kind of upstream of this, right? Where you might have contracts upstream that if you change the schema, some test breaks, and you get alerted to the fact that now your data thing isn't, isn't correctly stored. Um, or you have S3 with versioning enabled so that you actually never delete a file. You can only add a different version of a file. And then lastly, there's level three, which is a specialized solution for versioning data. And I would just avoid these until you try ver level two and then can explain how level three will improve your life. But there are some names that I want to give you. So one of them is DVC, one of them is Pachyderm, and then one of them is Quill. So you can kind of um, do a little research into that, see if it makes sense to you. It hasn't made sense to me so far. But here's an example of DVC. It's an open source version control system for machine learning projects. This is the one that I find most exciting out of the ones I listed. It's kind of hard to see, but um, essentially you say, when you add a data file, instead of saying like git add data.xml, you say dvc add data.xml, and then that creates, that uploads the file to S3, and then creates another file called data.xml.dvc, which has that link to the S3. That's kind of what I was telling you guys to do here uh, on level two, but it just kind of does it automatically for you, uh, which is, could be nice. And then let's say you want to transform the data.xml to something that you're ready to train on, which is going to be called data slash test dot TSV, right? Um, so in, you record the transformation that goes from XML to TSV by saying DVC run, you know, Python, transform data, whatever. And then DVC is able to kind of give you the pipeline at any time. So it like kind of maintains the pipeline of how the data was processed and the provenance of the data. I think it's, you know, it could be cool, but you guys should decide for yourselves. 